you'll see a little bit more detail in just a minute. So the demo is uh, not really a demo of RigWit per se. It's actually pretty boring to watch. You just sort of you give it the HTML file, either from the command line or in a GUI. You hit enter or click OK, and it gives you back a, uh, something else. So uh, it also takes a while to run because uh, not a huge amount of time, but about a minute, and you know, just a minute delay while we're waiting for a tool to finish is not very interesting. So instead, what I'm going to show is uh, just the output of it, and the, the de live demonstration is going to be the um, sort of a, a walkthrough of uh, pen testing a, a GWT app. Now, this is a, a real app that we're going to use. Um, Matt set up the, come on. Uh, wow, Matt set up the comment. virtual machine for it. Uh, it's uh, OpenKM, which is essentially an open source document uh, management uh, tool. So well, we're going to basically just run it through Burp, and I'll show you what everything looks like. So. Now, OpenKM is well written. Uh, I didn't do a full pen test against it, but it, it avoids a lot of the vulnerabilities that we see in, in uh, more poorly written GWT applications. You log in. Wait a minute, of course. This is why you don't see more live demos at cons. All right, so it looks pretty nice. You know, it's a slick interface once everything comes up, which who knows why it's not. Again, not Matt's fault. Here we go. Okay, I was just taking a minute for all the uh, the images to load. So it's a, it's a really a pretty slick interface. You have a menu. You know, you have it, you know something that could easily be have been written for for a desktop. It's going through some initialization after we logged in. So let's go over and take a look at exactly what was being requested through the proxy. Here's the login. Now this is not a login through GWT. This is just a traditional form that's being submitted. Now, there's no reason that you can't send logins through, our, uh, through GWT. It's possible to do securely, but it's, this is a common place where uh, GWT apps will, will mess up because really the login should be its own application. As soon as you started using a GWT app, you get all kinds of information about the, the classes and the, the RPC calls that can be made without having to log in. And while, you know, in theory, if you have everything secure, that's, that shouldn't be a problem. In reality, it gets a much larger uh, attack surface to unauthenticated uh, attackers, you know, that, that don't have credentials. So the, basically, the, GW, excuse me, the uh, uh, OpenKM developers decided that they were just going to um, not bother with that, just create a simple uh, page that for, for logins. So it goes, starts going through, uh, you know, stuff that you would see with most applications, get some... Uh, JavaScript, some uh, style sheets. This JavaScript is just responsible for uh, redirecting to the correct JavaScript based on the browser type. So you can see that there's uh, a lot of different names in here. Well, you might not be able to see. It's a little bit small. But uh, the big piece is right here. And it's huge. Burp won't display it won't fit. So let's go back to our browser and uh, I just bookmarked the file. You can request it directly. And the, the main thing that you want to look for is a string of uh, hexadecimal characters followed by .cache.html. And it doesn't display anything. You open it up. Open it up. There we go. All right. Well, suffice to say that it's huge. So huge that it's taking a while to load. Man, I must have really done something bad in the, <laughs> the speaker's room. Anyway, it's huge. Uh, you saw samples of it earlier. So. Instead of, of looking at it, we can just go back and we'll pretend that we ran it through RegWet, waited a minute or two while all the deobfuscation runs, and we'll just look directly at the 
the output. Hold on. In just a minute, I'm going to turn the speaker, the uh, microphone off, and start cursing. <laughs> no, that's not what I want. Okay. okay. Let's try this again. All right. So here we go. This is what Rigwit will generate. First thing that it lists are all of the RPC calls that can be made, and the class that they sit in. So this for uh, the authorization service, which isn't actually for. Uh, it doesn't handle authentication. It just handles user management essentially. Um, it lists the parameters that are required for each of the uh, calls. Uh, there's no way of knowing what the parameter name is, which is one of the challenges that, that still exists even after Riglet. There's no way of getting it back. That's something that's completely stripped out of the, the file. Um, so in order to, to figure that out, you basically have to start interacting with the application, watch what data is sent when this RPC call is made, or if you never see it, if it's never called directly, uh, because of you know privileges or whatever, you can still generate a request, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the next thing that it shows are all of the other classes that are, are client side, and the fields, the and the methods. Some of them uh, can be deobfuscated depending on how much um, data is removed. Some of them not. You can click on the link to the the function. Uh, all of the the. The functions are, are basically hot links so that you can jump between them. And, and then if you have the code, which has, uh, is more nicely formatted. Oh, well, let me just jump down here. Uh, more nicely formatted, has a um, you know, syntax highlighting and so on. So let's go back to burp and take a look at some of the calls that were being made. Uh, you can see that after it loads that, that large file, it mostly just requests uh, graphics. Never really needs to get any more HTML from the, the server. And eventually it starts getting into the post, which is where it's actually making RPC calls. This is the format for GWT RPC. It's not all that intuitive, even though it is um, uh, a little bit. So let's go back to the slideshow real quick and I'll sort of walk through the format of how, uh, how the RPC is set up. Okay, here we go. So the first field, uh, all the fields are separated by pipes, which is pretty obvious. Uh, the first one is how many parameters are being sent to the server. Uh, I'm not sure actually what the zero is. I think it's a version, but I'm, I'm not positive. Uh, six has to do with how many strings are here. Now, one of the things that Google did in order to uh, decrease the size of the, the transfer was to set up a string table so that if you were referencing the same string multiple times, it was only defined once. So there's six strings. Starts off with just the, with the uh, the URL that it's being sent to. The URL of the uh, RPC service uh, has a, a hash code, which my mind is blank as by what exactly that does. Uh, class that's being called, the method name that's being called, which obviously these two are pretty important. Uh, the next strings have to do with uh, the parameters that are sent to this method, which are, it's a array list. So this is the content of the array, just Java string, and this is the data for it, OKM root. 
The rest of it are the actual parameters. So parameter one matches up, or the first parameter matches up with string number one, the second with string number two, and so on. The very last one is the array, has one element, which is what the one is for, and five represents the type of data that's stored within the array, and six represents the, um, the final string, OKM root, which is the data that was being passed. So let's go back to VM real quick. And what we can do is um, we'll just grab this one here. And I'll, I can kind of show, show how the, uh, some of the attacks work against this. Let's see. All right, so one of the common things that we see with uh, vulnerable GWT apps is that they don't have any kind of authentication uh, enforcement. It's easy enough to test for, basically just kill the cookie, send it, and this is what you should get back is a, uh, you know, some sort of error, which just depends on the, uh, exactly how they've implemented it, but, you know, call failed. All right, so we can go back. Uh, another, uh, something else that uh, can show is what happens with a, oh, that is not the right one. All right, so let's take a look at uh, this class, the OKM repository, and you can go to the top first. So these are the, the methods that are supported in that. Um, get root, I think, is what was being called. Yep. So we could change it if we wanted to, to sort of explore the application and see what else is there. Most of these don't require parameters, which makes it a little bit easier. One of the features that I'm going to add um, after uh, Black Hat 2, or actually after DEF CON 2, uh, RigWit is, is something that will create a, a, a quick template for this, type, this RPC call so that you don't have to write it from scratch. It's not that big of a deal if you're calling within the same class and there are no parameters required, but if you have to start going and uh, figuring out how to serialize and deserialize the objects that are being passed, it, it, it can get a little bit more complicated, but um, it won't be all that difficult to add it to uh, RigWit. just ran out of time before the um, uh, presentation. So let's call the, let's call the, say, get trash. And just change this here to get trash. And this is the response just in uh, what's essentially uh, RPC, excuse me, uh, uh, JSON format. There's actually uh, specific um, deserializers for every class as well. So if we go back and say we want to look at, um, let's see, this one will work. Say, uh, All right, this is, uh, I chose a party. Anyway, um, sorry, there's some links that I thought would be here that aren't. But um, basically, you can jump around and, and you can find the uh, JavaScript methods that are used for, to deserialize and serialize all the classes that are defined as well. That's something else that I need to add up there, just a link to that specific function. Um, but I think you get the general idea. That basically, it provides summary information of the um, the, the within the code uh, in a format that's much more presentable to humans. All right. One, just a second. Okay. Um. Sorry, that, 